Hey there, everybody. It's the Middle Management Gamer, and welcome to another episode of Gamer Reviews Books Badly. Here today, we are going to be playing Diablo 4 as of my game of choice today, and our book will be this guy right here, Ulysses by James Joyce. This thing's a monster, so sit back and relax, and let's talk a little bit about it. Alright, so, little backdrop, I'm still running a Meteor Build Sorcerer, and I am running a level 19 dungeon here, so backdrop on what's going on in the background while we talk about our book. So again, welcome, we're again talking today about Ulysses, which uh, I'm about 20 pages from the end of. Me and Linus and Snoopy here. And uh, like I said, I like to review books I haven't finished um, because it's about the journey, not the destination. Uh, but there will be some reviews on some books I've completed because uh, there's a couple back there on that bookshelf I'd really love to talk about. And I don't really have a lot of people to talk books about, so y'all get to hear about it. Don't you feel lucky? <laughs> anyway. Got to recharge the camera. Um, anyway. Ulysses, so how I came to be reading this one. Talking about challenging books and books we've always wanted to read. Um, and Mike, one of my co-workers and friends, has a copy of Ulysses. Uh, two of them, actually. So he gives me one because he feels that I might be up to the challenge of reading it. Now, rewind back to probably 12 or 13-year-old me. Um reading a Stephen King book, and I'm not sure which one it was, it's just a memory of it I have. Um, characters in the book talking about how Ulysses was censored, um, and it's a very grown-up book and deals with grown-up um, themes, and kids shouldn't be reading. Um, I think it was a Stephen King book I got it out of, but honestly at this point I couldn't tell you. Uh, so I wanted to read it, but I just never got to the point where I could. Um, was always distracted by probably video games or various other activities, high school, just things I was dealing with. So I never got around to reading it. So fast forward to now, I'm 42, and I get a copy of this book, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to read this, because I want to see what all the fuss is about. Why was this book banned? Why was it censored? Um... What do people have against it? So, a little, little bit about the book itself. Um, so it's written by James Joyce. It was written between uh, 1918 and 1922, I believe. I'm um, not 100% sure on the years of publication. Uh, don't have any notes. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, that that's my understanding. And he wanted to tell the story of... Ulysses, um, the you know hero Odysseus from Homer's The Odyssey, and his heroic return from Troy to get back to his home and his wife Penelope. So basically, his thought process was, well, yeah, that's all great. He's a hero. <laughs> um, but we, we write these characters as heroes, and none of us ordinary people are going to anger the gods to the point where they're going to make it really hard for us to get home, or we're not going to be dealing with, you know, our wife cheating on us or having tons of suitors trying to take our land while we're gone. Um, he wanted to rewrite the character as, like, an everyman, and that is where we get Leopold Blue. He, I would say, basically the lead character. There's three main characters uh, that kind of the, the story, main narrators of the story revolves around. We've got Leopold Bloom. He's Jewish. He's a uh, advertising a salesman, basically. But he's never met. He's um, 
you know, he's educated. He talks books with his wife. He likes music. Um, he, he's just, you know, an all-around interesting guy. Um, and then you have uh, Dadalus, uh, Stephen Dadalus. He was the main character of another Joyce novel that I haven't read, um, Portrait of a Young Artist. Um, uh, I might get around to reading that, because I do like the character of Stephen Dadalus. Um, interesting. The book opens with him, so he's kind of the first character you're introduced to. And he represents Telemachus, who was uh, Ulysses or Odysseus's son. Um, and then you have Molly, who represents uh, Penelope, Odysseus' wife. This is Leopold Bloom's wife. Um, and I'm right at, uh, I'm actually at her chapter of the book where she narrates and kind of talks about her day and um, her reflections on Leopold's day. So that's where I'm actually at. So I don't really know much about her, but we'll, we'll kind of get into that. But... Basically, there, there's other comparisons. There's 18 chapters that the books broke up into, and uh, each one kind of represents a chapter or a part of the Odyssey. Uh, like, there's a chapter about the Lotus Eaters, and there's a, a chapter about the Cyclops, and Circe, and uh, I, I can't ever pronounce this right. Charybdis, Charybdis, uh, the sea monster, or the, the rocks, or the whirlpool. Uh, um, uh, part, all the, like, things that Odysseus or Ulysses deals with in his trip home. I wanted to kind of discuss, again, what led me to read this book. Um, I talked about always wanting to because of censorship. And it's interesting to me that this book was, you know, banned at all. Um, I guess based on the time that it came out. Uh, you know, people had more flowery language and uh, kind of understood illusions and metaphors a little bit more. Um, but one of the ways that it was actually banned or kept from publication in country was uh, mail and censorship of mail and not being allowed to import publications with certain language. And it directly, in the article I wrote that, I was uh, interested in the censorship of this book, so I did do a little bit of back study on that. Um, it deals with this one passage where Bloom is uh, on the beach, and it's actually kind of cool narration in this particular chapter. There's a character, Gertie, who isn't a main character, but she is one of the kind of like narrators. Um, she's on the beach, she's a young lady, and she is infatuated with this older man that's on the beach. And she realizes that this older man is watching her, and as she's watching him, and he's interested in her, the older man is obviously blue. But she's doing things to entice him, like pulling up her skirt and showing off her, uh, her underwear. And I guess uh, through flowery metaphoric language, um, Bloom is uh, pleasuring himself while watching her and uh, it actually like corresponds to a firework display when he uh, reaches his point of climax. So that's basically, I guess, the part of the book that was really bad that they wanted to prevent going all around the world and people reading. So. The problem with this is, is I don't think. Now, see, I had read the article ahead of time, so when I got to it, I knew what was going on, and you can figure it out. Um, but your normal person probably wasn't educated as much back then. So, would they have even realized the metaphor? Would they have even understood that they were talking about masturbation? I don't know. Um, but that's pretty much kind of how the language of this book is set up. It's tons and tons of allusions, um, metaphors, references to body parts, and 
orbs and <laughs> globes and women and men and the body parts and keys going into locks and turning and at one point uh, he's just talking about Bloom and Daedalus urinating and describing why their urine streams are different. I mean, it's a super interesting book. I, I, I really enjoyed reading it. I'm not going to say everyone should read it because um, it, it's a struggle. I mean, the struggle for you when reading it that. Um, but there's definitely a lot to get out of it. Uh, I, I saw another comparison that somebody did in the book um, where they were talking about um, basically how Ulysses is uh, <laughs> Seinfeld. It's about nothing. So it follows the characters uh, of the book over the course of a single day and all the things that's going on. It's basically um, mostly about Blue's journey around town as he runs errands. He wakes up in the morning. Uh, he gets breakfast for his wife. He reads the mail. He knows that his wife, uh, Molly, is unfaithful and that she's sleeping with um, her manager. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brace Blaze, Blaze Boylan. <laughs> Um, so he knows all this, but uh, he's not really innocent in his, his own right. He is uh, having a literary affair with another character. I can't remember her name. He's using an author to put that letter. But uh, he's basically having a written affair. Yes, it's not physical, but in his own right, he's cheating on his wife. So he's not completely just a uh, couple free of blame in this situation, but it's clear that him and his wife love each other, but another, a lot of the, um, sorry, blah, 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 I get tongue-tied, which is want to happen when I'm trying to fight this here boss guy, um, anyway, I was saying about Steven, oh, so it's his day, his journey, his, uh, Odyssey, so to speak, as he is traveling around um, Dublin. He goes shopping, uh, he does his job, he goes to a newspaper, he goes to the library, uh, he runs afoul of um, anti Semitic behavior. Uh, some of the underlying themes is anti Semitism, um, some of the underlying themes is also regret for um, things that are done in the childhood of both Blue and Steven, and I think Molly, to a certain degree, regrets a little bit as she kind of thinks about Blue and his proposal and their youth. Um, I think to a certain degree she regrets what she's doing. That's one of the underlying themes. Um, Irish patriotism. Um, is apparent quite a deal. They're talking about, um, you know, being Irish and great warriors and sailors and this, that, and the other. And basically, at one point, one of the really anti Semitic characters is talking about how much better Ireland would be if the Jews weren't there. Um, Bloom, being Jewish, uh, is accosted at one point. Even though he's not really one of the practicing ones, he, he talks about his regret to not dealing with kosher food and whatnot, um, and not following in the things that his father taught him. But um, he, he defends his religious and religion, and he, he tells this um, Irishman, I, I can't remember the name of the character, um, I think they call him the Citizen. Uh, this chapter is basically narrated by an unnamed tax collecting character that uh, just kind of goes around and tells you what's going on. And it, it's interesting because, you know, Bloom is telling the citizen that uh, Jesus himself was a Jew, and, you know, that's his argument. And one of his friends kind of gets him out of there before. There's like a fist fight. But there's some, some more interesting things to unpack with Bloom, and he's got a daughter who's away to school, and she's like 15 or 16, and he's, you know, thinking about 
what she's got going on and how she's doing. Uh, and he thinks a lot about his son, his, his real son, not uh, Steven, his... Um, I need to ooh, I'm getting hurt. Well, I beat that. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be over that. Um, that was a quick dungeon, and that was rated a lot higher. I'm out of mana. So, Steven represents, again, his son in the book Telemachus, but Bloom had his own son. Uh, I believe the character's name was Rudy, and he, he passed away. He didn't survive, and Bloom is looking for kind of a surrogate son, and at some point, he wanders upon Stephen, and they end up at a brothel together, and this whole chapter is really, like, just hurt your head, because it's switching back and forth between Bloom and Steve, um, Steve and Daedalus, and they're having hallucinations. They're, they're, it's told in like a kind of a stream of consciousness kind of writing, and Bloom and Steve are having hallucinations, so it's kind of hard to keep track of, you know, what's going on, what's real and what's not. Um, but Bloom decides that he needs to look out for Steven, because Steven's very drunk. Um, he's, you know, he's a, a kind of like an algebra math teacher at a private school. Um, he's, he's the portrait of the artist character again I mentioned earlier, but he, um, he's kind of upset with the way, I guess, people kind of treat Jewish people, um, and how Catholics behave, kind of goes on about that. Um, I may have misinterpreted that, but he gets, you know, his boss gives him an article that he's supposed to carry about foot and mouth disease, um, and he wants to run in the paper, and he tells all these jokes about humor, um, about, like, why do, why is there no problem, why, why don't people, why are people as mean to Jewish people in Ireland as they are in other countries, and the guy jokes, it's because the Irish never let him in. Um, so th there's kind of that, that running theme, but, um, he kind of sees, I don't know in Bloom, I don't know if he sees him as a father figure as Bloom sees him as a son or one in need of protection. But Steve's been having kind of a rough day, so he's drank a little heavily. Uh, he doesn't have a place to stay because his um, roommate, um, Buck, who's a medical student, has kind of taken over or usurped his home. Uh, kind of how Telemachus' character feels about all the suitors that shows up for Penelope in the Odyssey. So there's, again, some allusions to or references of the Odyssey. So I know, I think I got distracted. I was talking about um, how it's kind of like Seinfeld, and it's kind of about nothing. Um, and Ulysses Bloom's character traveling around, and all the different thoughts he has, and, you know, going to the store and buying soap, and going to the post office, and doing his job, and just all the kind of funny things that happen. Um, I really enjoyed the book. Uh, I, I think you should read it if you're looking for a challenge. Again, it's got some beautiful language, some beautiful metaphors. Um, at one point, a character says, uh, history is a nightmare from which I'm trying to awake. It's just kind of gorgeous. Um, he's kind of looking back at the things that have led to where he is, and I just... You can get lost in the language. Um, the writing styles of the book can be very complex and be hard to keep track of, but even though you might not know what's going on or you might not be able to understand, you can find articles, you can find all sorts of things to go back to analyze each chapter. You, you can reach each chapter as kind of like a separate entity. You don't have to sit down and read the whole book as a whole. Um, it kind of jumps around in time, like it starts off with Stephen, and it's from 8 a.m. until a certain point, and then it jumps back in time and deals with Bloom, and it's 8 a.m. for him, he's doing the breakfast, and it just goes through their day and what happens. Um, their stream of consciousness writing, where it just flows from one idea to the next in a non-stop barrage of beautiful, like, soliloquies, um, metaphors, there's a section where he's at the newspaper art, art, um, office and it's written in like newspaper headlines and little articles and there's like a town crier yelling out the headlines. It's just really interesting. Um, there, there's a part where it's, you know, he's dealing with, um, again, I said each chapter is kind of like a direct reference to a part of the Odyssey. There's a part where it's a chapter entitled uh, Circe where he's dealing with the, the witch. 
and uh, he has a potato that is like his ward against her powers, and um, I mean, it's just fun, fun stuff going on. It's just, it's really difficult. You might have to reread something over again. Uh, I suggest maybe getting the book on audio. Um, the one that I was listening to while I was reading, I was kind of going back and forth. Uh, it is helpful. Um, is written by, uh, read by a comedian, um, Jim Norton. Uh, his comedian does good voice acting on it. Sings along. There's parts where there's like singing, uh, like lyrics. Um, there's a section of the uh, book which is um, it's the part where they're at the, the brothel and the hallucinations and everything. It gets very confusing. But it's written as an actual play with like stage direction. Um, so just really interesting. Uh, if you want a really tough book to read, uh, this is the one. Uh, if you are a fan of The Odyssey, um, if you're a fan of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, um, this is a good one to read because it's another take on that style of story and what they're dealing with. Um, again, I really enjoyed it. I think you will too. That's the end of my video. I finished up. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't played Diablo 4. That's the game we're playing right now. I hope you enjoy it. Again, Ulysses. Yes, don't know where the camera actually is. I don't have my monitor. So, Ulysses by James Joyce stands up. Uh, apparently, one of the hardest books ever to read. So, challenge yourself. Have a good day.